Hello everyone, welcome to Micro Movie Recaps. In this session, we will discuss the film titled Sniper Vengeance, released in 2023. Let's dive right into the storyline. The story begins with a secret mission at a discarded gas factory in Southeast Asia conducted by a special sniper team known as Team Storm. Captain Gao John acts as a sharpshooter accompanied by his reconnaissance companion, Old Bird. The mission of Team Storm this time is to secure their boss, Major General Howard, who plans to reclaim a destructive weapon believed to be stolen by a businessman from Prindavan. Howard appears to be escorted by ground operation forces led by Ah Zhong. After General Howard finishes inspecting his weapons, he instructs his troops to get ready to return. However, suddenly they are attacked by a group of terrorists who, it turns out, had been lurking since the beginning. Team Storm immediately takes action as the terrorists unleash thousands of bullets towards them. However, they appear overwhelmed, as they did not expect the terrorists to have more sophisticated weaponry. Complicating matters further is the presence of a terrorist sniper named Alex, making it challenging for Gao John and Old Bird. The situation becomes even more complicated, leading Ah Jong and the storm forces on the ground to decide to retreat and escape using a van. However, this endeavor proves to be challenging. Inside the building, Gao John and Old Bird also face a difficult task, defeating the terrorist sniper before they can secure their safety. Unfortunately, their positions have been compromised as the enemy sniper intercepted their communication from the beginning, making it difficult for them to confront the enemy sniper. Meanwhile, Ah Jong and his troops, attempting to escape in a van, were suddenly confronted from the front and side by the terrorists' automated robot weapon. Despite their efforts to take cover, the weapon penetrated the vehicle, causing the death of all team members on the spot. A terrorist on the ground checked to see if the members of Team Storm inside the van were truly dead. In contrast to the enemy sniper, Alex, who had a western appearance, the terrorist wielding the automated weapon turned out to be a pink-haired woman. Meanwhile, Gao John and Old Bird continued their efforts to descend from the building while avoiding gunfire from Alex. In the midst of the escape, Gao John saw Howard rise again, even though he had seemed dead before. However, before Gao John could comprehend the situation, he witnessed Old Bird fall, shot by Alex. Gao John attempted to rescue Old Bird, who was in the crosshairs of the enemy sniper, but unfortunately, Alex's super accurate weapon thwarted the rescue effort. Gao John himself was thrown from the top of the building and lost consciousness. When he regained awareness, he found himself in an ambulance. However, the ambulance was intercepted by Mike, one of his comrades. Mike suddenly accused Gao John of being a traitor who killed their teammate and claimed to have found around $400,000 in Gao John's account, accusing him of intending to use the money for tumor treatment. Mike then pulled out a pistol and attempted to attack Gao John, but fortunately, Gao John was still agile enough despite being severely injured. Despite the challenging situation, Gao John managed to turn the tables. He requested the team storm members on site to place their weapons down, then forced them into the ambulance, locking them inside. Gao John apologized to Mike and the others, promising to expose Howard's deceit and vowing not to let the deaths of Old Bird and Ah Jong be in vain. Gao John then hijacked one of the vehicles at the scene and drove away. Since that moment, all media outlets reported false news, making Gao John a scapegoat for Howard's betrayal. Time passed, and now Gao John lived in a remote area. While there, he worked on healing his wounds through exercise and training. Not only that, Gao John slowly investigated the betrayal involving Howard and prepared himself for revenge. Afterward, we shift to the Convention and Exhibition Center in Southeast Asia. We witness a group of scientists holding a meeting with investors in the field of technology. Meanwhile, the rebel leader seen at the beginning of the film arrives at the venue, not as a scientist or investor but as a disruptor. The scientists and energy experts are kidnapped and taken to a hidden location by the terrorists. In his distant hideout, Gao John hears the news and is convinced that the abductors are the same forces that previously attacked him and framed him. His determination for revenge strengthens after watching introductory videos from his time in the special forces. Gao John decides to go to the scene and disguises himself as a police officer to identify this terrorist group. After observing the crime scene from various angles, Gao John discovers bullet marks that still have projectile remnants. He collects these samples as clues for his investigation. Unfortunately, his actions are noticed by two police officers, forcing Gao John to confront them. On that night, a special forces team led by Mei Ling successfully captures and disables the kidnappers in their hideout. As they prepare to escort the surviving hostages, Mei Ling receives a call from her superior, assigning her the ongoing task of capturing Captain Gao. Gao's actions have been recorded through the CCTV system. On the other hand, Captain Gao, feeling insecure, 
decides to find a new hiding place. However, the location has been surrounded by terrorist forces, forcing Gao to fight against them. With his skill in avoiding gunfire, Captain Gao successfully incapacitates all enemies. Unfortunately, when he faces a blonde woman, Gao is thrown off balance due to an attempt to avoid a grenade explosion. At the same time, the anti-hostage team under the leadership of Mei Ling arrives at the location. Captain Gao is forced to surrender. During the journey with Gao, Mei Ling shows a little emotion as she still believes that Gao is the murderer of their colleagues. A commotion ensues, and finally, Gao manages to turn the tables. He orders the aircraft pilot to change the flight route, and eventually, Captain Gao John parachutes down to a remote island. Mei Ling, who does not want her mission to fail, decides to pursue Captain Gao by landing on the same island. The next scene depicts the headquarters of the ghost forces or terrorists who previously kidnapped the scientists. The ghost leader, Howard, is revealed as the mastermind behind all the intrigues. He forces the scientists to activate an infrasound weapon that uses very high-frequency sound waves or infrasonic frequencies, capable of destroying anything in its path. Seeing the infrasound weapon function well, Howard is pleased. However, he does not fulfill his promise and decides to continue holding the scientists because the clients who will buy the weapon are expected to arrive soon. Suddenly, a danger report emerges as six parachutists, led by Mei Ling, are detected by their radar. Therefore, Howard orders his subordinates to quickly locate, eliminate, and terminate them. After that, we switch to Island Inlet Marina, a guarding post at the entrance to the Ghost Forces headquarters. Through his sniper telescope, Gao Zhang observes the armed forces operation. Seizing the opportunity, Gao quickly disables three guards with his extraordinary skills. On the other hand, the six-member team under the leadership of Mei Ling halted their steps after discovering a land trap in the middle of the road. They were confused, wondering if this was Gao's doing. By assigning tasks to their respective positions, they awaited the enemy's movements, ready to face an attack. As it turned out, the situation became critical when terrorist forces emerged in the vicinity, approaching the troops led by Mei Ling. Fortunately, several strategically placed grenade traps successfully obliterated some of the terrorist units. With unwavering determination, Mei Ling's forces endeavored with all their capabilities to drive back and repel the terrorist troops, sparking an intense battle that tested their courage and skills. A Dong, injured due to the grenade explosion, was immediately evacuated. The team retreated temporarily, planning their next move. On the other side, the elderly scientist nicknamed Old Buddha turned out to be connected with Gao, observing from a distance using a sniper rifle. Old Buddha intentionally created chaos, drawing two guards inside. He counted down to give the signal to Gao, and on the count of one, Gao successfully shot two enemies simultaneously with high precision. After rescuing the scientists, Old Buddha handed over his advanced glasses, used to record evidence of the mass destruction weapon. With this evidence, Captain Gao could be cleared of the charges. Gao ordered the scientists to leave the island immediately, while he would assist Mei Ling's team, now the target of the enemy. Mei Ling and her team were trapped by the enemy with no chance to fight back. Two individuals became hostages, and one survived, Mei Ling, while the others fell. Mei Ling, who had been brought by Gao and had recovered from her unconscious state, once again expressed criticism and accused Gao of being the murderer who caused her mentor, Old Bird, to die. A debate ensued in which Gao explained that Old Bird died in front of him due to enemy sniper fire. He felt deeply saddened as Old Bird was his teammate, considered like a brother. Shortly after, Old Buddha contacted Gao again and reported that two hostages were being taken by the enemy. Not long after that, Old Buddha and the group of scientists were attacked by enemy forces. Hearing the gunfire, Gao and Mei Ling attempted to locate the source of the attack. They discovered that the assault had led to the recapture of Old Buddha and the scientists. Unfortunately, the advanced glasses belonging to Old Buddha, which served as evidence, were discovered by the enemy captain. The glasses were then used by the enemy to contact Gao, who was with Mei Ling at the time. Gao had warned not to touch his uncle, but the opposite happened. The old man was brutally executed in front of Gao. Witnessing his uncle's death, Captain Gao suddenly felt a headache. His memory flashed back to the moment when Old Bird died in front of him. Mei Ling, observing Gao's condition, promptly administered medicine to Captain Gao. From this, Mei Ling realized that all of this had been planned, starting from the fact that Howard was still alive and using the storm team to search for the mass destruction weapon. Gao was deliberately kept alive to be a scapegoat, as if all of this was his doing. Captain Gao and Old Buddha were part of an internal special forces unit trying to expose the entire issue and gather crucial data in Howard's laboratory. 
Their sole objective was to clear their team's name and unveil Howard's sinister agenda as an arms trafficker. From this explanation, Mei Ling now believed that Gao and his team had been framed. To avenge her mentor's death, Mei Ling pledged to collaborate with Gao in a mission to eliminate Howard's henchmen. On that night, Mei Ling and Captain Gao successfully freed their two captured comrades. Meanwhile, inside the headquarters, Howard was contacting his boss, who would finance their operation. Initially, the mysterious man agreed to pay 50%, and Howard was instructed to destroy one city with the weapon. On the other hand, Gao and Mei Ling successfully infiltrated the enemy's weapons warehouse. They discovered the robot weapons previously used to eliminate their comrades. Li and Cho, disguised, managed to enter and were tasked with rescuing the scientists. After all preparations were deemed ready, Gao immediately activated the robot weapons to attack the enemy forces. After successfully eliminating Howard, Alex, the terrorist leader, became furious. He immediately ordered his subordinates to search for and eliminate Gao and Mei Ling, who were currently in hiding. Inside the weapons warehouse, the terrorist forces were confused because a box truck suddenly sounded. They thought Gao and his companion were hiding inside the truck, unaware that they had fallen into a trap. Meanwhile, in another warehouse, a firefight broke out. One by one, the enemies were incapacitated with traps and clever tactics they had prepared beforehand. From the darkness, Mei Ling quickly disposed of enemies using her deadly close combat skills. Even when weapons were pointed at her, Mei Ling still managed to survive because Gao continued to provide support with his sniper rifle from a distance. The sexy blonde woman, who was previously incapacitated by a grenade explosion, had now regained consciousness. She immediately sought Mei Ling, and an intense duel between these two tough women ensued. With Howard's death, leadership of the operation shifted to Alex, the terrorist leader. The plan to destroy the city was still ongoing, and the weapon would be activated shortly. On the other hand, time was running out, leaving only 5 minutes, and the remaining enemy was the terrorist boss. An epic duel unfolded where Gao sought to avenge Old Bird's death, while the terrorist boss was determined to retaliate for Howard's death. Meanwhile, Joe and the rescued scientists reunited with Captain Mei Ling, who was attempting to deactivate the active infrasound weapon. To thwart the weapon, they had to destroy it from the outside. However, it was not an easy task as the weapon was made of highly durable titanium material. The only way was to detonate the central part of the weapon, which was, of course, extremely dangerous. Returning to the battle of two equally powerful snipers, both injured, they tried to avoid close combat and opted for a long-range skill showdown. Captain Gao used his reliable weapon, spotting a gap where he utilized an iron pipe as a shooting path that successfully incapacitated Alex, the terrorist boss. On the other side, Mei Ling and Zhou, attempting to destroy the infrasound weapon, were still trying to withstand the electromagnetic waves that caused their blood to stop in their heads. In the end, Gao assisted them by holding back the waves using an iron shield. Unfortunately, the weapon's weakest point was the central part, and Mei Ling had no choice but to shoot Gao. The bullet pierced Gao and hit the weapon's coordinates. The film concluded with the success of the team in destroying the weapon referred to as a mass destruction device. Captain Gao's sacrifice, trading his own life to restore the honor of the Storm Team, became a moment of selflessness in their struggle. And then, the film came to an end.